Welcome to Stories from the Driver's Seat. John Martin had been on the road for hours, his GPS telling him that his destination was still a good 30 minutes away. He was driving through rural Pennsylvania, a route he had never taken before, and the night was growing darker by the minute. The winding road, lined with dense trees, seemed to close in around him as the last traces of twilight disappeared leaving nothing but the faint glow of his headlights piercing the night. The road ahead was narrow, with sharp turns that forced him to slow down more than he would have liked. The isolation of the place was beginning to get to him. No other cars had passed in the last hour. The radio was losing signal, sputtering out a mix of static and distant country music, only adding to the eerie atmosphere. He decided to turn it off preferring the silence over the disquieting noise. As he rounded a particularly sharp bend, John noticed a small wooden sign on the side of the road. It was old, the paint faded and peeling, but he could still make out the words. Hollow Bend, population 82. The name sent a shiver down his spine, though he couldn't say why. It was just a town name after all but something about it felt wrong. Continuing on, he soon found himself driving through what must have been the center of Hollow Bend. The town looked like it had been pulled straight out of another era. The buildings were old, their wooden facades weathered by time. The streets were empty, not a soul in sight. No lights were on in the houses, and the only illumination came from the dim streetlights that flickered intermittently, casting long shadows that seemed to dance across the road. John's unease grew as he drove deeper into the town. His GPS beeped, informing him to turn left onto a road named Willow Way. The street was narrow and lined with overgrown bushes and trees, their branches arching overhead, creating a tunnel of darkness. He hesitated, but then reasoned that it was probably just a shortcut. Taking a deep breath, he turned onto Willow Way. The moment he did, the atmosphere seemed to change. The air grew thick and the temperature dropped noticeably, sending a chill through the car. The trees on either side of the road loomed closer, their gnarled branches almost scraping the sides of his vehicle. The road itself seemed to stretch endlessly into the darkness, with no sign of an end. John glanced at his GPS again, but the screen had gone black, as if the device had died. Frustrated, he reached for his phone, but it too was unresponsive, its screen frozen. A sudden wave of anxiety washed over him. He was lost in the middle of nowhere, with no way to contact anyone or find his way out. The road ahead grew rougher, and the trees seemed to press in even more, their branches almost touching the roof of the car. John could barely see more than a few feet in front of him, and he slowed down even further, fearing he might crash. As he crept along, something caught his eye in the rearview mirror, a faint flickering light far behind him, like a lantern swaying in the breeze. Curious and a little spooked, John kept glancing back at the light. It was getting closer, though it moved slowly, almost rhythmically. He couldn't tell if it was another vehicle or someone walking, but the idea of someone being out here in the middle of nowhere at this time of night made his skin crawl. He tried to ignore it, focusing on the road ahead, but the light was persistent. It drew nearer with every passing minute until he could see it more clearly. It wasn't a car. It was a lantern held by a figure in a long coat and wide brimmed hat walking steadily down the road. The figure's face was obscured in shadow, but the way it moved, so deliberate, so unhurried, set John's nerves on edge. Something deep within him told him not to stop not to let the figure catch up. He pressed down on the gas, hoping to put some distance between him and whatever that was. But the road was too treacherous. 
and he couldn't go fast enough to shake the feeling of being followed. Just as he was beginning to think he might never escape this nightmare, the road took a sudden, steep decline. The car began to pick up speed, and for a moment, John felt a surge of relief until he realized that the trees were thinning out, revealing an old, decrepit bridge up ahead. The wooden structure looked like it hadn't been used in years, its planks rotted and sagging. With no other choice, John braced himself and drove onto the bridge. The car's tires creaked and groaned against the old wood, and he prayed it would hold long enough for him to get across. Halfway over, he glanced in the mirror again and saw the figure standing at the edge of the bridge, the lantern now burning brighter than before. For the first time, John could make out the figure's face, or rather, the lack of one. Where a face should have been, there was nothing but darkness, a void that seemed to swallow the light. Panic surged through him, and he floored the accelerator, desperate to get to the other side. The car lurched forward, the bridge swaying dangerously beneath him. He could hear the wood cracking, splintering, as if it were about to give way at any moment. Then, with a final burst of speed, he was off the bridge and onto solid ground. The road widened and straightened out, and the trees fell away, revealing the open countryside ahead. John didn't stop. He didn't dare look back. He just kept driving the fear still gripping him, even as the town of Hollow Bend disappeared in his rearview mirror. It was only when he saw the lights of a gas station up ahead that he allowed himself to breathe again. He pulled in, his hands trembling, as he parked the car. The station was old, but it was a welcome sight. He needed to calm down, needed to convince himself that what he had seen was just his imagination, a trick of the light and his tired mind. John got out of the car, his legs unsteady beneath him. The gas station was deserted, the pumps rusted, and the building dark. But the sign said it was open 24 hours. He walked up to the door, hoping to find someone inside, but it was locked. Peering through the dirty glass, he saw nothing but empty shelves and dust-covered counters. A soft sound behind him made him turn sharply. The lantern. It was there, in the distance, moving slowly toward him, the figure still shrouded in shadow. John's heart pounded in his chest. There was no escape. He could feel it now, a cold certainty that the figure would catch him, no matter how far he ran. Without thinking, he jumped back into the car and sped away from the gas station, the road stretching endlessly before him. But no matter how fast he drove, the lantern's light remained in his rearview mirror, growing closer, closer until it was right behind him, illuminating the interior of the car with an eerie glow. John could feel the cold presence beside him, could sense the void where a face should be. He didn't dare look, didn't dare slow down. He just drove, faster and faster, as if trying to outrun the inevitable. But deep down, he knew there was no escape from Hollow Bend. They found John Martin's car the next morning, overturned in a ditch just outside of town. There was no sign of him, just the faint smell of burning lantern oil lingering in the air and the chilling words scrawled on the inside of the car's windshield. Welcome to Hollow Bend. The days that followed John Martin's disappearance were filled with speculation and unease. News of the incident spread quickly through nearby towns, with rumors swirling about the mysterious town of Hollow Bend. Locals whispered about other travelers who had passed through the area and never been seen again. But while the stories were chilling, they were always just that, stories. There had never been any concrete evidence of the town's sinister nature, only the lingering feeling that something wasn't quite right. John's sister, Emily, wasn't willing to accept that her brother had simply vanished. She knew John was a careful driver, not someone prone to accidents, and she couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible had happened to him. With no leads from the police, 
who were treating the case as a missing persons investigation, Emily decided to take matters into her own hands. It was late afternoon when Emily set out, determined to retrace John's last known route. She had always been close to her brother, and the thought of him being out there, somewhere, alone, and possibly hurt, filled her with a fierce determination. Her car was packed with supplies, flashlights, a map, extra batteries, and a phone charger. She wasn't going to take any chances. As she drove, the familiar landscape began to change. The roads became narrower, the trees taller and denser. The setting sun cast long shadows across the road, and Emily found herself glancing at the GPS more often, noting each twist and turn. Her stomach churned with anxiety as she neared the spot where John had last been seen. It wasn't long before she spotted the old, weathered sign. Hollow Bend, population 82. The sight of it sent a chill down her spine. She pulled over to the side of the road, her heart pounding as she stared at the sign. Something about it felt wrong, as if the very air around it was tainted with something dark and malevolent. But Emily wasn't one to back down from a challenge. Taking a deep breath, she pressed on, her eyes scanning the road for any signs of her brother's presence. She soon reached the small, ghostly town center of Hollow Bend. The place looked exactly as John had described it in their last phone call. Desolate, untouched by time, with a strange, oppressive silence hanging over it. She drove slowly, trying to keep her nerves in check. As she turned onto Willow Way, the temperature dropped suddenly, just as it had for John. The road ahead looked foreboding, the overgrown trees forming a dark tunnel. Emily could feel the hairs on the back of her neck stand up as she continued forward, her headlights barely penetrating the gloom. Suddenly, her car's engine sputtered and the lights flickered before the vehicle came to a complete stop. Panic surged through her as she tried to restart the engine, but it was dead. She was stranded in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by nothing but darkness. Emily grabbed her flashlight and stepped out of the car, her breath visible in the cold night air. She had a sinking feeling that she wasn't alone. The silence was deafening, the only sound her own footsteps crunching on the gravel as she walked around the car, hoping to see what had caused the breakdown. Then she saw it, far down the road, a faint, flickering light, just like the one John had described. The lantern. It swung slowly back and forth, moving steadily toward her. Her heart pounded in her chest, and she quickly jumped back into the car, locking the doors. Her hands shook as she fumbled for her phone, but like John's, it was dead, the screen unresponsive. The light grew closer, and Emily could make out a figure behind it, cloaked in darkness. Fear gripped her, but she forced herself to remain calm. She wasn't going to end up like John. There had to be a way out. Desperation took over, and Emily grabbed the map from the passenger seat, spreading it out on the dashboard. She traced the roads with her finger, searching for an alternate route, anything that would get her out of this nightmare. But the map was old, outdated, and didn't show the smaller roads she was on. It was as if Hollow Bend didn't exist. The lantern light was almost upon her now, illuminating the interior of the car with its eerie glow. Emily could feel the cold seeping in, could hear a faint whispering in the air, as if voices from another world were trying to reach her. She could barely bring herself to look up, but when she did, she saw the figure standing just outside her window. The same wide-brimmed hat the long coat, and that face, if it could even be called a face, it was a void, an abyss that seemed to draw in all light, all warmth. The lantern hung in the air beside it, burning with an unnatural flame. Leave this place, a voice rasped, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. 
leave, and never return. Emily's instinct was to run, but she was frozen in place, unable to tear her eyes away from the figure. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the lantern flickered out and the figure vanished, leaving her in total darkness. Gasping for breath, Emily slammed her foot on the accelerator, even though she knew the car was dead. But to her surprise, the engine roared to life, the headlights flickering back on. Without a second thought, she spun the wheel and tore down the road, away from Willow Way, away from Hollow Bend. She didn't stop until she was miles away, the town long behind her. Her hands were shaking, and she could barely keep the car on the road. She knew she had to find help, had to tell someone what had happened. But when she looked down at her phone, it was on, the screen glowing softly as if nothing had happened. Emily glanced in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the lantern light following her. But there was nothing, just a dark, empty road. She pulled over to the side, trying to catch her breath, her mind racing with what she had just experienced. As she sat there trembling, she noticed something on the passenger seat. It was a small, old notebook, the leather cover cracked and worn. She didn't remember picking it up, but there it was. Cautiously, she opened it and found that the pages were filled with scrawled handwriting, almost too faded to read. The first few entries were mundane, accounts of a traveler passing through Hollow Bend in the late 1800s. But as she flipped through, the tone changed, becoming more frantic, more desperate. The last entry sent a chill down her spine. I am trapped here, the Lantern Man. He comes for those who enter his domain. If you find this, leave while you can. Do not look back. Hollow Bend is a place forgotten by time, cursed by those who once lived here. I can hear him now. The light is coming for me. Emily's blood ran cold. The notebook slipped from her hands, falling to the floor as she realized the truth. John hadn't simply vanished. He had been taken by the same force that had nearly claimed her. But she had escaped, and now, with this notebook, she had proof. Proof of the horrors that lurked in Hollow Bend. She knew she had to get out of there, far away from this cursed place, but she also knew that she couldn't leave her brother behind. Gripping the steering wheel, with renewed determination, Emily made a decision. She wasn't going to run, not this time. She would return to Hollow Bend, find her brother, and end this nightmare once and for all. As she turned the car around, heading back towards the town that had swallowed so many before her, the first faint glimmer of dawn began to touch the horizon. But even as the sun rose, she knew that the true darkness was still ahead of her, waiting in the shadows of Hollow Bend. And somewhere in the depths of that darkness, the Lantern Man waited, his light flickering ever closer. The final part will be next Thursday at 9 p.m. This story is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Thank you for following along with me. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you for watching and I genuinely appreciate you all.